How do I tell a story about more than 85 American heroes on the same plane embarking on a journey to pay homage to what they fought for, the sacrifice they made for you and me? Where do I begin? The fifth honor flight of Southern Indiana ascended into the morning skies for Washington, D.C. on October 22nd. On this Veterans Day Eve, this is not a story celebrating war. Moreover, we're saluting those who did everything they could to prevent future war, future pain. With that said, now, here is Don's early light. They were here to see the stone of monuments, the metal of sculpture, the words etched onto memorials. But there is much more to this story. Dan Atkinson. Opening a letter from author unknown, children they've never met. A simple from the heart, unprompted thank you from a little girl in a crowded airport. Right here. Today. today. On, on the bus today. Two elderly soldiers born the same day in the same town, meeting for the first time. In the darkness of morning, you begin to get it. With their guardians watching their backs like a fellow grunt in a foxhole. Ready for your service. They walk, they use their wheelchairs, they wait. An exercise of patience for these Americans who face much greater issues when many of them were kids. They're the center of attention now. A face of character in a crowded terminal, preparing to board a certain flight. Thank you for your service. Do you be able to help him? They are ready for their close-up. Well, we appreciate your service to our country. They shake hands with the mayor. But it is in their eyes that tell the story of anticipation. Wheelchairs loaded. All right. <laughs> Got a lot of people out here in Evansville that support you. Two fire trucks shower the Airbus 321 with cannons of water, forming a heart in the Evansville blue sky. And we are on our way. <laughs> they are waiting and dancing in Washington, D.C. They make their way through a terminal full of thank yous and salutes. It is a gusty day in Washington. We arrive between the peak of the Washington Monument and the eyes of Lincoln at the end of the reflecting pool. There it awaits, the memorial many felt would never be built. From the steel and materials from our earth, the stuff of aircraft, tanks, and firepower, to the ore of wheelchairs, they arrive at the World War II Memorial. All right. okay, healthy. Even though many of these men don't use them, they do this day, wheelchairs to ensure the honor flight crews, their guardians, some of them sons, daughters, and friends can get them to as many venues as possible. Time is a precious commodity for all. They enter this hollowed place. I can't tell, I can't tell you. It just tears me up. There are so many memoirs hiding in plain sight. One of them belongs to Dudley Riley, American World War II vet, defender of freedom, and prisoner of war. We were uh, flown out of North Africa into Sicily, and uh, from Sicily over to uh, a prison camp at Capua, Italy. And we were there about two weeks or so, and uh, crammed into box cars and transported up to Munich, Germany. I was liberated by the Russian army. I got a gr group of my friends together and we, we escaped and made it back to the American lines. I have uh, made some st strong friendships with uh, former prisoners of war. Alan Sanderson flew 118 missions in his P-47. Made in Evansville, among his missions, Normandy D-Day. We didn't feel it was a sacrifice. We, uh, we felt it was just something we wanted to do. Uh, we didn't like the idea that the Japanese had attacked our country, and we would do anything to defend it. There are Korean War vets here, too, seeing the Korean War Memorial for the first time. 
two of them meet each other for the first time on this day. I lost my friends on Heartbreak Ridge. I was on there for a while, and uh, I lost several of them. Uh, yes, it is a forgotten war, and there were a lot of young men that, that gave their lives over there. Then to the Vietnam War Memorial. Many of the honor flight crew who make this trip possible are Vietnam vets. To the west, we arrive at Arlington as a guard stands watch. Oh! For the first time, the honor flight of Southern Indiana places a wreath at the tomb of the unknowns. For millions of soldiers, it took weeks to get word from home. James Fisher. No wonder you can see the excitement in the eyes of these souls as they sift through the packets of mail. For many, they arrive to a homecoming they never had. Their spirits remain high. They will see another Don's early life.